Good morning, friends. I am Patty Elhoff, the author of Upcycle with Decoupage. And I have this watering can that I've been using all summer, but as the months have gone by, it's gotten pretty beaten up. But there's no reason to throw it out. I'm going to take some chalk paint and I'm going to use a decoupage and a transfer and a few other little tricks on here to turn this into something that I can use all throughout the Christmas season. So I added two layers of chalk paint, two coats rather, of chalk paint to this. And the reason why I am almost always using chalk paint on my projects is because you don't need to do any sanding. You don't have to prep your surface and it covers just about anything that you're working on. This image I got from the Graphics Fairy. I printed it out in reverse and I'm going to tear this image out. By the way, this is a laser print. I have an inkjet printer, but inkjet prints tend to run. If you want to do a very nice transfer and have much better luck with it, you really should uh, go to the copy center and get a laser transfer made. You can do it yourself. The self copying machines are all laser printers and they won't run or bleed. Now I'm taking a paintbrush and I'm going all around this image to weaken the fibers because I want to tear these hard black edges away. And once you wet the paper, and this is just standard copy paper. You don't have to ask for any special paper, anything special. You may even have a laser printer at home. But this is just regular old copy paper. So once I wet the front and the back, I'm able to tear out the image. And this gives you a lot more control when you wet the image like this. I'm also finding that this Liquitex matte gel medium works perfectly for these transfers. So I'm going to apply a layer of the matte gel over the surface. I'm then going to place my image down. But what I did first was I dampened my image and then I blotted it on a lint-free cloth. I added the gel medium to the transfer as well and then placed it down. Now I've got a lot of indentations or grooves in this surface. So in order to get this to adhere, I took some saran wrap and I pulled it around the image tightly, but I also used my fingers because nothing is going to stick to the saran wrap. Then I pulled this away and I flipped this over and I did the same thing on the other side. I'm just using the saran wrap to tamp that down a little bit. Now I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Now you can air dry this, although it would take between six and eight hours and overnight is even better. Or you can put this in the oven. And what I like to do is I place it in the oven while the oven is turned off. I set the oven to 175 degrees Fahrenheit. I know some people ask me that. And when the oven reaches the 170 degrees, you want to turn it off and leave the piece in there for about 15 to 20 minutes and then take it out to cool off. And it cools off within about 10 to 15 minutes. For some reason, only when I have used Christmas napkins with red on them, uh, they have sometimes bled. The color red bleeds and I don't know why that is. But you can just take a paper bag and experiment with your different napkins with red on them if you have them, just to make sure they don't run or bleed. All of these look fine. So what I'm going to do is decoupage around my transfer, but we first need to remove the paper so that the transfer throws sh th shows through. <laughs> Talk much. So I'm taking a wet cloth, a warm wet washcloth, and just to begin with, 
I am wiping away some of the paper and you can see how the image stays behind. Now if you're a little too overzealous with this you will pull away some of the transfer so you want to find a happy medium. I did mess up a couple of times and pull some of that away. You can also use your fingers but if you're working on a large project that can get a little tiring on your hands and your fingers. So I'm going to do this on both sides. I'm going to remove the paper so that the image shows through. And then I'm also just going to take my fingertip and dip it in some water and remove any little excess bits of paper that may be on here. You can see a couple of little areas here where I was a little overzealous and pulled some of the transfer away, but that's okay. I'm still going for a vintage look. Now I want to try to frame these with my images, frame the transfers. So I'm taking water on a paintbrush and I'm going around several of the images and I'm just going to tear out about as many of these as I think I'll need for my project. And I have separated the napkin, so this is down to just one ply. And now I'll begin to decoupage. And I'm going to just do a dry run and see if I like a certain pattern. You can wet this with a little bit of water to keep them in place temporarily, just to see how you like the way that it looks. And then once you do, you're going to, going to need your saran wrap or your plastic wrap. And I'm using a fan brush. I find that it's a very gentle brush when you're decoupaging with napkins. And I'm placing my image down. And then I am putting the saran wrap over the surface. I'm pulling it tight. And I'm also using the saran wrap when I want to press out any wrinkles that might be in the surface. So I'm going to continue to go around my transfer and frame the image with my napkins. And something I may have neglected to mention, you want the background color of your napkin to match your chalk paint color as closely as possible. This color chalk paint is a cream color. It's not quite ivory and it's not quite tan. It's just a little bit in between there. And the background of the napkins, with the exception of some of the script, is almost the same because you want your napkins to disappear into the paint so that your images look like they're painted on. And by the way, all of these products are available on my website. The link is below. All you need to do is click on the link in the description of this video. It will take you right to my website. Uh, my website goes through Amazon, and if you've got Amazon Prime, all of the same features apply. I still try to get you free shipping on everything that I can because I personally don't like to pay for shipping myself. So what I'm going to do now is I am going to go over my whole surface on both sides and I'm going to decoupage the images over my transfers to frame them and I'm also going to go around the spout and the handle and then I'm going to put this in the oven once again I'm just going to place it in the oven set the oven to 170 degrees. When it reaches 170, I'm going to turn the oven off and leave this in there for 15 minutes. It will dry it out nicely. You can air dry this. I happen to be impatient, but I also know that when you put this in the oven, it smooths out a lot of wrinkles and it hardens your decoupage glue. Once this is cooled off, I'm taking a nail file and I'm going around all of the places where I've overlapped and I'm just removing any of the excess napkin. And now I'm going to take my project and I'm going to coat the whole surface with one layer of decoupage glue. You can either oven dry this or air dry this. Once it's dry, we're going to add a top coat or a varnish. Do not put varnish in the oven. <laughs> this has to air dry. 
Now, you may want to skip through this part, but do you see how it looks like, it's supposed to look like there is water coming out of this. If you want to hang this up as a Christmas decoration, this is actually pretty interesting. So I'm going to show you how to make these faux water beads coming out. You can also use teardrop crystals instead of doing what I'm about to do, but this is much less expensive. Took a plastic water bottle. This is not my idea, by the way. I read this on a blog somewhere during the fall. And you just cut strips of the plastic bottle. You cut the top and bottom off, cut some strips here, and cut points at one end. Then you hold these over a tea light candle and twist them. What happens is it melts the plastic. Don't hold it too close because they'll come apart. But you just hold the strip over the tea light and you start to twist it. You should be holding one end with a pair of tweezers actually. Then you wanna take one of these tacks heat it with your candle, and press it on through the plastic. I'm trying to get this on film so it's a little harder to see. It's best to place the plastic down and put the tack through that way. And one bottle gives you about 20 of these. And I will have this clear wire on my website for you. And what I did was I took my hot glue gun and put a little dab on the end of it and put it into the spout. I know it's a little hard to see. And then I added different lengths of these fake water drippings. My glue did not dry uh, clear last night. I'm hoping that by tomorrow, sometimes it just takes a while to completely clear out. This is just regular old glue from the hot glue gun. And I just put this in most of these holes, but not all of them. Now I did this because I would like to hang this up as a decoration in front of some pretty lights. You may just want to use it to keep flowers in. Now what I'm doing here is I'm taking the fan brush and this is the final step. I wanted to put mica over this and I am using a glue called Weld Bond because this way the mica will not flake off and the mica has a more vintage look than glitter. Again, all of this is on my website and the link is below. And then here is how our completed project looks. I have some better shots than this. There's the full water coming out. And here is how the mica looks. We're outside now and you can see some of the, it's kind of an old fashioned glimmer to it and that is over our transfer and our decoupage. And in the meantime, guys, thank you so much for subscribing. I try to get back to you as soon as I can. I do answer all questions. I also have a page on Facebook, Upcycle with Decoupage. If you like and follow the page, you will be notified every week when I put a new video out. Thank you so much for subscribing and your lovely comments. Some of you, we chat quite often and I love hearing that. I love chatting with some of you guys, most of you, all of you. <laughs> Please keep, keep in touch and I will see you guys next week with another video. Thanks again, guys. Bye-bye.